Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord to worship. Our Amen. feet shall stand within thy gates, O Amen. Jerusalem. Amen. And behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to come together and worship. Amen. To you, our visitors, family, and friends, it is a blessing to have you come and worship with us here this morning. Amen. Here at One Way Assembly, we sincerely pray that you find the occasion to come back and worship with us. Yeah. And we pray that you receive something from the word today and that it will encourage and enlighten, enlighten and lift up your soul. Amen. If anyone had a birthday between last Sunday and today, please stand. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Happy Amen. birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God bless. Christmas, I would say. Christmas, Hallelujah. which is nothing wrong with it. Right. But we want to know the real reason. That's Jesus right. is right. the reason for Amen. the Amen. We know that God sent his only begotten son that All whosoever right. believes in him should not yes, perish. Amen. Amen. And when we celebrate, we want to be Amen. joyous. All right. We have a reason to be joyful. Amen. Joyful. Have a joyous occasion. Yes. Hallelujah. So this morning we just say to God be the glory. Yes. And we just praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to the world, the Lord has come. Sister Sheila, good to see y'all. Praise God, your voice. 
man, it's good to see family and friends and loved ones, man. Just always excited to be in God's house. God cannot keep me away from here because a lot of us still don't get it. All right. We have 52 Sundays in a year. Yeah, we're on the 49th one. Isn't that something? We yes, bless you to make it all this time. And Amen. a lot of times we're not thankful enough. But he watched over you all the other days, all Amen. the weeks and months. Amen. And you made it to the last one. Somebody started last year and didn't make it. Yes, it's good yes, to be here. Amen. 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 Good, good. We have a lot in store for us today. We have a good, interesting word for us as well. As long as you have your Bibles, we're going to provide us with the word of prayer that we will proceed on into the text this morning. Amen. Amen. This morning's text will be coming from the book of Hebrews. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this morning, um, chapter 12, verses 12 through 17. The book of Hebrews, a lot of times when we say Hebrews, people start looking in the Old Testament. <laughs> the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, Amen. chapter 12, verses 12 through 17, when you're there, say I'm there, you find there. it in the actual Bible, the written word, or if you have it on your phone and app, that's great too. Amen. Let's have Amen. a word of prayer. Dear Father God, we thank you so much for being with us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for watching over uh -huh. us all last night as we slept in slumber. Thank you, Lord. As we transition into our fifth level of sleep. Yes, Lord. It wasn't the alarm clock. It wasn't a text. It wasn't yes, someone that woke us up. Right but it now. was just you, oh Lord. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because you stopped by our residence. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. All over the world, there are various time zones, but you did not forget to stop by and wake us up. Hallelujah. Provide us with Thank traveling you. grace to let us arrive safe and sound to this place. Yes, Lord. Uh, we thank you for watching over our children last night, yeah. whether you. we knew where they were or not. Amen. But, Father, we thank you for... Your word. We thank you for life itself. We yes, thank you Lord. for allowing us to make it this far. Amen. As we look back over this year, we you brought us from a mighty long way. Amen. Thank you. But Father, Lord. this morning, we thank you for every Zoom listener, viewer, and caller. We thank you for those who are with us on social media. Yes. Father, Lord. as you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except Amen. he be drawn. Amen. By Amen. 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 But Father, we thank you for drawing us to your house to hear a word, yes, sir. a living word, a rhema word, a right now word. Yes, sir. And Father, we invite your spirit into this place and we just come again asking forgiveness for all of our sins and all of our transgressions. Yes, Lord. Clean us up as we invite the Shekinah glory to this room. Amen. Jehovah Shammah, who is the Lord <coughs> with us. Father, we thank you so much and we praise you. We ask all these blessings in the matchless, priceless name of Jesus Christ, who is the King of the universe. Amen. Yes, we Lord. pray, amen. 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 Let's amen. give God some praise. Amen. 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 There's nothing like the table being set. Amen. I'm going to be reading this in a easy to read version. I'm always a stickler on making sure we really understand what the text says because a lot of times we don't understand but I remember Solomon said in all you're getting make sure you get Amen. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 Verse 12 says you have become weak so make yourselves strong again. Yes. Amen. Verse 13 says live in the right way so that you will be saved and your weakness will not cause you to be lost. In verse 14 it says, try to live in peace with everyone. I know sometimes that's hard, but we need God's strength to live in peace with everyone. And it says, and try to keep your lives free from sin. Yes, Anyone whose life is not holy 
will never see the Lord. Amen. Mm. In verse 15 it reads, Be careful that no one fails to get God's grace. All right. All right. Be careful that no one loses their faith and becomes like a bitter weed mm. growing among you. Amen. Someone like that can ruin your whole group. Mm. Y'all right. got any bitter weeds amongst your <laughs> Your clique, your group, your friends. All right, all right. Got to prune them out. Verse 16 says, Be okay. careful that no one commits sexual sin. And be careful that no one is like Esau and never thinks about God. As the oldest son, Esau would have inherited everything from his father. But he sold all that for a single meal. Mm. What are you willing to sell out God for? What have you gave up God for? Some of us might give him up for a game that came on at 10. Interesting. Verse 17 says, You remember that after Esau did this, he wanted to get his father's blessing. He wanted that blessing so much that he cried. But his father refused to give him the blessing. Because Esau could find no way to change what he had done. All right. All right. I've read to you verses 12 through 17. May the Lord have a rich blessing on the reading, the hearing, and a very special blessing on the doer of his word. Amen. But this morning we will deal with section C. Section C of verse 17 where it says, he wanted that blessing so much that he cried. For a few moments, I would like to talk about, I would like to reveal, I would like to teach, I would like to expound and preach, teach a message entitled this morning, Stop whining and start shining. Amen. Stop whining and start shining. Do you know anybody throughout the year of 2023 personally? I don't know. I'm not saying it was you. But I don't know if you knew somebody close to you and your family and friends or co-workers or somebody whines all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they always complaining. They're in a down spirit, not realizing it was God who even allowed you to have an existence to be living amongst the living. Oh, yeah. Amen. So many of us whine. So many of us complain. But God really wants us to start shining more than whining. Amen. And what I've discovered we have gotten it a little too much confused because there comes a time where we have too much dining and whining. I'm not talking about that whining. I'm talking about the W-I-N-E, wine. A lot of times that wine makes us whine. Y'all right. probably didn't catch that. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we have too much wine and it makes us start whining. All right. Because you are too much caught up in your situation. And I know we go through many things, but God really wants us to shine. Mm 
Because regardless of what you're going through, he's going to bring you out each and every time. Amen. No matter what your depression is, yes, he's going to deliver you because that's how good he is. Amen. And this morning, I'm so excited this morning to share a very unique message that encourages us to shift our perspective from complaining about the darkness and embracing the opportunity to shine like stars. Amen. Do you want to shine or you want to continue to whine? Amen. You can cry all you want. It's not going to change a thing. You see, the title of our reflection is simply profound by stop whining and start shining Amen. instead of complaining all the time. I know you can look back over this little year. We made it to the last month. There was a lot of whining. There was a lot of complaining. But in the midst of your whining and complaining, did you give God some praise in the midst of it? And I know sometimes it's hard to complain and give him praise in the midst of your complaints. But you have to be thankful because if he brought you out of that first situation, he's definitely going to bring you out of the next. See, the first time you whine, you should have learned then. But he brought you out of it, but now you back in it again because a lot of this stuff is self-inflicted stuff. All right. Some of us are repeated offenders. God will give deliver you and you go back to it. All right. He brought you out and you went back over there and got back into this situation and that situation didn't realize he had a plan for you to learn to stop whining and start shining. Amen. Amen. But in a world that often encourages us to voice our complaints and dwell on the challenges that we face all the time, scripture invites us to a different way of living. Amen. In Philippians 2, 14 and 15 encourages us with these words. Paul said to do everything without complaining or arguing. But it's interesting how a lot of us like to complain. We like to argue. Some people just wake up and want to argue. All Isn't right. that something? They don't even want to say right. good morning, but they want to get all into it already. Right, right, all right. right. Verse 15, Paul says, so that you will be blameless and pure, children of God without any fault, but you yeah. are living with evil people all around you. All right. Some all right. of us don't even realize that. Somebody, you know, people always think that everybody's nice. Hospitable and holy. That's not how this thing works. You have to remember, just because some people got baptized, they think they're good now. The fact of the matter, some of them should have stayed under a little longer. Been coming up too quick. I understand you went under and came about and you think you got it. But you need to look for the second baptism because John the Baptist says, I baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me, that's the one you want, he that cometh after me shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. See, the key is, have you been fire baptized? A lot of us just been rinsed. See, the water just removes the dirt and the sweat. You need something to go a little bit further and penetrate in. Some of us like the little, uh, they call them bird baths. See, a lot of Christians have just had these little bird baths and all this stuff and thinking you clean as a whistle. Amen. No, you need to do a little bit better than that. And then Paul right. says, among those people, you shine like lights in darkness. All right. You see, you have lost their sense to what is right and what is wrong. Because you know we live in a world today where people are making wrong right yeah. and uh -huh. right wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Your yes is no yeah. and your no is yes. Yeah. All right, now. That's because society has a grip on the agenda of the 10 rule agenda by Alice Bailey. Yeah. A lot of people don't even realize that these are rules that was enforced from the United Nations that are implemented in gradually changing society and our culture right under our nose and don't even see it. Yeah. Yeah. We are supposed to shine like lights Hallelujah. in the darkness. Amen. But the problem is this. You can't whine and shine at the same time. If you're supposed to shine in darkness, but if you're whining in darkness, nobody's not going to feel that. You're supposed to shine because we are lights 
And your life's supposed to be a light to everybody else so they can see what's going on, see the right way to go, see to do this, see to do that. But today, let us explore what it means to shine brightly in the midst of life's difficulties and how choosing a mindset of gratitude, faith, and positivity that can transform not only our own lives, but the lives of others around us. Isn't it interesting as a parent in your light is not even shining to change your own children? All right, man. That's interesting because you're trying to tell your own child that's under your roof to shine, but all they do is see you whining. Okay. They see you complaining. But watch this. When we talk about whining, the W-H-I-N, that kind of whining, but the thing is if they see us doing too much whining, that makes us whine. Now we see how this thing is connected. Oh, yeah. Interesting. All right, all right. See, it's sad when a child lives under your roof and they can't see your light. See, the light starts in you to light up this house. Amen. And those who come in and out of this house, and that way your children can go out and perhaps make a difference too. Amen. But if we they see us doing stuff, they're gonna emulate what they see sometimes. Amen. Now. That's the problem right there. You see, may this message inspire us to become like beacons of light. This Hallelujah. Morning. See, but a lot of us are familiar with different types of lights. Yep. Perhaps you're familiar with a bud light. Uh-uh. Or you love asking people, do you have a light? All right. <laughs> we got to get these lights for fixed, right? All right. We got to really figure this thing out. Which light do you want to light up with? All right, now. <laughs> you see, as I said, dispelling the darkness and radiating the love of Christ in us, that's what's supposed to do. That's Amen, what now. If Amen. Jesus is the light and the light of the world, and Jesus is in you, you're supposed to light somebody up. Hallelujah. Not fight light somebody up. But right. You're supposed to light them up. Hallelujah. When people now. see you, they're supposed to get excited. Yes, Lord. Joy because they know who you are, but there are some people you can see from a distance. More or less, see, you can hear them mm -hmm. from okay. a distance. All right, now. You can, y'all know some people that you can hear them before you see them? Yeah. All right, now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. See, I want to share a message that calls us to rise above our circumstances and overcome our challenges. Amen. But that's the problem. You don't want to receive your challenge. You want to avoid your challenge, but your challenge there is to change you. Hallelujah. And embrace a mindset of victory. Yes. Again, the title of this message this morning is Stop Whining and Start Shining. Amen. Now, how can we stop whining and start shining in Jesus Christ as a Christian. I'm so glad you asked me that question. You see, stopping the habit of whining and starting to shine as a Christian involves a deliberate shift Amen. in Amen. mindset and behavior. Yes, yes. It looks weird enough as an adult whining. <laughs> see, whining is accepted from a child. All right. Or kid, but there's something interesting when you find an adult whining. You see, <laughs> whining comes from not winning. All right. How about that? Whining comes from not winning. Why are you not winning? Are you on the wrong team, or did you pick your own team? Did you choose him or her to be on your team, or be a team of your team? You have to be equally competitive at the same time in the practice of following Christ. Amen now. Amos says, how can two walk together Hallelujah. unless they be in agreement? Amen now. There are so many people that are not in agreement right on spot. You know good and well, you don't want to deal with nobody if there's an aroma coming from them. In other words, you already smell them before they say how you doing. All right now. But you're gonna accept what is coming into your nostrils. Amen. 
Amen. All right, now. I'm just showing you how we will accept anything and then turn around and complain and why, but you did it. All right, now. If you want to win, you must have Jesus on your team first. Hallelujah. Let Jesus pick those who come in Hallelujah. your life and yes. tell, tell them who to be sent from Hallelujah. your life. Hallelujah. Thank you. But it's so easy because here are some practical steps to help you cultivate a shining attitude in Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. How can we have a shining attitude? Well, you need to cultivate gratitude. All right. How do you do that? You must begin each day with thanksgiving. Okay. But as you remember, during the month of November, we talked about thanks living instead of thanksgiving. All right. You follow me? So we need to begin each day with a day of thanks living. Take time to acknowledge and thank God for his blessings, both big and small. Amen. Most of us wake up telling everyone else, good morning, except the Lord. All right, now. It amazes me, and I don't mind, but it really amazes me when people say good morning. The first thing I'm thinking in my mind, I wonder, did you tell the Lord thank you? All right, thank you, Lord. Be interesting. That's Amen. interesting to think about that because some of us are so quick to get up to tell somebody else. Good morning, but right. did you tell the Lord? Hallelujah. Good morning, Father, for thanking you for waking me up. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. We must keep a gratitude journal. Amen. Yes, yes. What is that? A notepad or a diary to reflect on the positive aspects of your life. Yes. You see, many forget what God has done for them, mm. but don't forget what somebody did to you many years ago. See, you forget what God has done for you, but you won't forget what sister so-and-so or somebody did to you back in junior high. <laughs> All right, now, <laughs> now. I was at my locker and they came by and shut my locker and I didn't get my books out yet. You gonna hold that grudge? Say, <laughs> say. But you didn't forget what God did for you throughout ha 2023. Hallelujah. Yes. But we have the ability to not forget when people do something to you. All right, now. But what have you done to God? You've been in violation since you got here. Uh, all right, now. But God is so good. That's what he does. He watches over you every day. Thank you. We God. need to stop that kind of mentality. You see, when faced with many challenges, unintentionally we focus on what you can do to be grateful for. What can you do to be grateful for? Look where he has brought you from. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Lord. I didn't realize on April 18, 1993, when my whole entire life changed. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That was just 23 years. Yes, But Lord. it felt like it was so long. Because I was so wrong in my loneliness out there. All right, now. It felt like he brought me from a mighty long way. And I was so young Hallelujah. in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And right. it was just interesting. It was so much rest. Hallelujah. He said, come unto me, ye all ye labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Amen right. now. Do you realize how much rest I found being that young? Hallelujah. 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 Come on. I was over here. I was over there. I was doing this. I was doing that. I was doing a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have been doing, but I felt like it was so hard for me. All but right. now I'm 32 years in now. Hallelujah. Thank you. Since then. Thank you. Thank you. And it's a little much better, I could say, but with a little bit of time, it says time it's better with Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you. I know what I'm talking about right there. Thank you, Lord. He brought me. What's another thing we Hallelujah. must do? We got to anchor yourself in Hallelujah. God's word. Amen. Now. See, we got to regularly immerse yourself in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. A lot of us don't even read the word of God. Yes, we Lord. want somebody to read it to yes. us Amen. instead right. of us reading it for ourselves. We don't study to show ourselves yes. approved. Yes. Yes. Has anyone ever tried to study a newspaper? <laughs> All right, now. You can pick it up and read it, but 
is something interesting about a newspaper. It's news. All right, now. It's based upon the four poles of the earth. All right. There are four poles, north pole, east pole, west pole, south pole. All right. That's where you get your word news from. It's about the four poles. It's giving you information about the earth. Yeah. But it's interesting how a lot of us do not absorb the word in our lives. Right. Yes, Lord. Yes, it will Lord. definitely be a difference yes, how you handle your own life, your decisions, the things that you do. Yes, Lord. But so many of us are so easy to let people tell us anything. All right, yes. now. Just like, has someone ever told you to turn to Second Hezekiah? Hezekiah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all might get that tomorrow. <laughs> It was so funny. One time I stood in a church and I just wanted to check something out. I said, can y'all turn to the first book of Hezekiah? And I heard pages. <laughs> and I waited till I stopped hearing the pages. And I said, do we need to have Bible study this morning? People are subtle to a famine that's coming. Amen. People today in society want the word so bad. Mm -hmm. Where know. can you go get a real word? Now, Hallelujah now. I look at churches like restaurants. All right. There are many fast food restaurants. All right now. There are some regular kitchens. All right now. Where is the roof Chris's? All right, of the now. church. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. You know a church simply by this factor. Hallelujah. Where is the word put in place? Now, if you go to a church and there's like a A, B, C, D, E, F, G selection, then you might get 20 minutes of a message. That's called a sermonette. All right. Okay, now. That's why you have too many Christianettes. All right, now. They don't have enough word in them. Hallelujah. As I told you, there's 52 Sundays in a year. Your average service is only two hours. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So that's a little bit over two days worth of word. Now. Two days is 48 hours. All right. And as I keep saying, if the detective can get somebody to snitch in 48 hours. All right. I'm way beyond because I'm snitching that Jesus is still alive. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. You see, we need to memorize key verses that remind you of God's promises Hallelujah. and his faithfulness. Use a Bible as a compass for decision making. Amen. Wow. And problem solved. Yes, sir. See, a lot of us can't make the right decision because we don't have the gift of discernment. Right, right. right. Did you not know that's the first gift yes, that accompanies the Holy Spirit? Amen. The gift of discernment. But we don't use it because we're not concerned to use the gift of discernment. Amen now. And that's why we keep making these mistakes. Pray with a positive spirit. Yes. Amen. Approach prayer not just with requests, but also with praise and thanksgiving. Amen. Now you got to do that. Ask God for a positive and resilient. Yes. That word resilient is another word for durable, yes. strong Amen. spirit when facing challenges. Amen. Now, but a lot of us run from our challenges instead of stepping up to the plate to deal with them. Amen. We have to seek His guidance and strength. In maintaining a shining attitude. Amen. What's the shining attitude? We have to keep the light on so others can see it. Hallelujah. If Tom Bodell at Motel 6 said, we will leave the light on for you. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Where your light at? All right. Isn't that something? Amen. We will leave the light on for you. I wonder what that PG e bill look like. Oh, Nobody right. even checked in But the light on That's what they say But I need to find it is your light on today Hallelujah. Right. 
You have to shine regardless of what's going on. But see, if you do more shining than whining, then people see what's going on. But if people see you whining more than shining, that's a conflict of interest of your Christianity. We gotta guard your words. Yes, yes, yes. Be mindful of your speech. Hallelujah. Uh -oh. Be mindful of your speech. Yes, yes. Avoid complaining and instead speak words of life and encouragement to Hallelujah. somebody. Hallelujah. Now, amen. Isn't this something that every time you see this person, they always talking about somebody? All right. They always talking about somebody else's business. All right. And never their own business. All right. Now. Proverbs 18.21 says and reminds us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Amen. Basically, the tongue can speak words that bring life or death. Amen now. Amen. Some of y'all tongue look just like a tombstone. All right. Isn't that something? That tombstone tongue of yours. All right. Just walking around speaking death. Yeah. Like an open sepulcher. Yeah. All right. Death and destruction. Yeah. What amazes me, we got a double sided tongue. All right. Now. Anybody remember Two Face Harry from Batman then? <laughs> well, we got a lot of people that are two faced with their tongue. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. They can say praise the Lord, hallelujah, and then step outside and cuss you out. Uh, 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 okay, now. Now. Who well, does something? Now. Yeah. It is amazing to me because James says, How can a fountain bring forth sweet water and bitter water at the same time? Amen. Now. But I know some of us don't really get it because when we look at Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came back as a mighty rushing wind, yes, the Ruach, the Paraclete, yeah. the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, yeah. he didn't touch their hand uh -huh. to give you a high five Thank you, Jesus. or raise holy hands. Uh -huh. When the Holy Spirit came back, he didn't touch your feet uh -huh. so you can do a holy dance and do a nice two-step. No. The Holy Spirit touched their tongue. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The first, let me share something with you. The first identification that somebody's life has been changed. No. They're going to speak different. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on now. That's true. So true. I don't know I why we missed that. Yes. But I know we want to go buy a nice hat. Come on, we want to go buy a nice dress, some gloves, a purse and shoes. And my brother, we want to go buy a nice suit with the hanky gators and all that. All right. That's exterior change. Amen yeah. now. Yeah. Listerine can't fix that. All right now. Kale right, pectate can't fix that. That's all right. right now. A breath mint can't fix that. Uh, a a tic-tac can't fix uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. What's all coming right. out of your mouth. Because that stuff coming from your heart. Yes, it is. Amen. See, that's coming from an area that's totally different. Amen. Now you might have heartburn. Now that Amen. might be the problem why you're still cussing and acting a fool. Is that uh, what the uh, reason it is? All uh, right. But we try to camouflage this so good. Some of our tongues just need to be painted red. Uh -uh. All right. I got one. Uh -uh. <laughs> Those who love to talk must be ready to accept what it brings. Hallelujah. Not right. I keep telling you, make sure your tongue does not write any checks okay. and it can't pass. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, use your words to build up and edify others. Amen. Now. Even in challenging circumstances. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, I know it's so easy because sometimes it cracks me up because I'll be around some people and they might let a few a few words drop and they'll say, I'm sorry. I'm like, man, go do your thing. I'm not the one that's going to. I mean, I get what you're saying, but I need you to do that when I'm not here. All yeah. right. Hallelujah. Now, now. Cracks me up. I used to see people walking in front of the church. They'll be drinking. Turn up, you know, you have a brown paper bag with some in it. They will put the top on it and walk by the building. Then when they pass the building, they'll take the top back. 
I've right. seen people cussing up a storm. As soon as they get in front of the church, they'll be quiet and resume. Uh, all right. I'm trying to figure out the building doesn't even know who you are. Right. All right. All right. <laughs> but if you could give that much respect to a building, Hallelujah. Why you can't give respect to the God whom you know you don't see? Hallelujah. No. The Lord is, Thank you. If you don't have that much respect for the building, right. let's drag the building everywhere you go. Uh, uh, all right. Amen. Okay. Now. Amen. All right. I'm just trying to figure it out. You doing all this stuff, and then when you get here, you change. All right. Now. It cracks me up how some of us do so much away from here, but I keep trying to tell you the word church, when you look at it, yeah. is C H U R C H. All right. Now. The two little letters yeah. in between the two C H's yeah. is U R. All right. right. Now. You are the church. Hallelujah. Even when you're not in church. All right, now. Understand, but Hallelujah. we do so much on our way here, not realizing you're the church when you're at home. Amen. Now. You're church when you sleep. You are the church wherever you are. Amen. Now. So why do we act like we got to come to the church to do what's right? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We only here for two hours. I mean, if this two hours can be a blessing for you, I hope it can. Which means it's going to require much more on your behalf. Amen. Now, if there's 52 Sundays, as I said, in a year, what are you doing the other 313 days then? All right, now it's much more to this thing. Yes. You owe me some help. Hallelujah. You see. And that's why I said the Holy Spirit touches your tongue first. See, I know we, like, we love to change everything else, but we don't want to change how we talk to them. All right, right now. now. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. That sounds like a deliverance thing. Yes. All right. It doesn't right. happen in due time because if I can do it, so can you. Right. Hallelujah now. It's all good, but here's another one. Surround yourself with positivity. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Uh oh, choose to associate with people who uplift and inspire you spiritually. We have some people in our circle. We have some people in our rectangle. We got some people in our circle. We got some people in our pentagon. I don't know what shape you got around you, but you got some folk around you that you know you shouldn't be around. Hallelujah. It says bad communications corrupt. Good manners. Amen. Amen. Right. Manners to the point where, why is it that when I'm going down cutting, we got that brother that's red back in the passenger seat like this <laughs> at the gas station and his female or whoever is pumping the gas. Okay. Uh, all right. Now. Wow. What is that about? <laughs> Just recline, taking it easy. All right. But that's the society we live in. Yeah. Sure, yeah. That's the society. We need to engage in positive activities yeah. Amen. that contribute to your spiritual and emotional well-being. Amen. We got some destructive folk we around. Yes. You know good and well, they not cool. All right now. It would be nice. If you could bring these people with you to church. Hallelujah. Now. But let me share this with you. The reason why we have a hard time bringing people to church with us. Because they watch us during the week. Hallelujah. Wow. Now. Right. You see. If you acted a fool. Amen. Acted moody on Monday. Uh -huh. Tired up on Tuesday. Uh -huh. Worrying on Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> Theatric Thursday all right. and Foolish Friday uh, all right. and sit down on Saturday. All right. now. Then it's time for you to invite them. That's not going to work. All right. now. Because that's the problem. We just think you can do anything you want. All right. now. Not realizing people watch us. Listen to us. All right. Now. Yes, and do. some people don't realize they're the only Bible they go see. Yes, Amen. 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 
We have to be a source of positivity Hallelujah. and encouragement for others. Amen. That's what this is about. Then you got to reflect the light of Christ. Hallelujah. Some people don't have Jesus in them to reflect the yes. right light. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yes. And I do believe this is the season where a lot of people like to cut on lights. <laughs> okay, man. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. You see, some of your lives are just like the assorted arraignment around your house. All right. Uh -huh. Some days you are red hot. <laughs> some days you're green goblin. <laughs> some days you're in the blues. <laughs> and your life flickers each and every moment. All right. And your life is just like a tree. All right. All these different lights. You don't know what you go get. Oh, here they come. I don't know what light on today. Uh, uh uh. And a lot of times we are our own worst enemy. Yeah, right. Yes, sir. As I said, a lot of times when you look in the mirror, you're looking at the problem right there. Mm -hmm. All right. But you want to look and see who else is the problem. Uh, all right. Pointing oh. the finger at somebody else, not realizing three are back at you. Come on. All right. All right. Now. All right. Yeah. I'm around. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, see, we got to remember that you are a representative of Christ on earth. All right, right now. You're a representative. Hello. Yeah. yeah. You see, let your actions, your attitudes, and your responses reflect love, grace of Jesus Christ. Hello. It's very simple. Hello. Shine brightly in your interactions with others. Hallelujah. Demonstrating the transformative power of Christ in your life. Well, hallelujah. See, if Jesus Christ has truly changed your life, you should know it and other people should see it. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. Now. Oh, uh, we got to do this one too. We got to practice contentment. That's yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. Learn to be content. Oh, yeah. In all circumstances. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. I know that's hard to do because no, Paul man. said in Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13, he said it like this. Verse 11 says, I'm telling you this, but not because I need something. Right. Come on, man. I have learned to be satisfied with what I have Amen. and with whatever happens. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. Verse 12 says, I know how to live when I'm poor yeah. and when I have plenty. Ooh, yeah. I have learned the secret of how to live through any situation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When I have enough to eat or when I'm hungry, when I have everything I need or when I have nothing. Right. Yeah. Right. Let me tell you something. The reason Jesus was able to feed the multitude was because uh -huh. he only had how many loaves? Five. 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 Two, two fishes. Five. Five. How many items was that total? Seven. seven. What's the number seven? Complete. Complete. Completion. So he had a complete lunch to feed the multitude. Hallelujah. You follow me? So in that text with that parable, Philip was the one who held the calculator all the time. He was all the one right who was now. very quick to calculate Amen. how much it cost with how all much right. it would cost. Jesus said, listen, put your calculator down. Oh, All right. right. Now, 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 now. When you got me, you got it. See, a lot of us yeah. try to count and figure things out. Yeah. When you have Jesus Christ, you it's already it figured out. Yeah. Yeah. It's already fixed. Yeah. Yeah. It's already complete. It's already done. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Paul says Philippians 4 and 13, Christ yeah. is the yeah. one who gives me strength and I need to do whatever I must do. Whatever I need to do, I'm going to allow him to do it instead of me trying to do this. That's part. Amen. See, focus on what you have rather than what you lack. Trust that God's provision and timing are perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By intentionally incorporating these practices into your daily life, Amen. you can shift from the mindset of whining to start shining. Amen. Become a beacon of Christ in the light of the world. Amen. Now, now that we covered that, let's look a little bit into this context of Hebrews chapter 12. You see, verses 1 through 3, the writer addresses that we also should be following Jesus Christ as an example. Amen. 
Then in verses 4 through 11, the writer addresses that God is like a father to us. Amen. Do you know who your father is? Hallelujah. We're definitely not fatherless. And we don't need Maury Povich to confirm that. Okay. In verses 12 through 29, the writer addresses to be careful how you live. See, a lot of us are not careful how we live today. Hallelujah. And I'm going to mess with some of y'all because y'all know this is the last month of the year. God has blessed you to make it here. Amen. Amen. We we'll have a couple of Sundays left and I can hear them already now. Hallelujah. There's a spirit of the New Year's resolutions. Yeah. Here we go with that. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to try to get my wardrobe together. For what? I want to eat better. I want to leave this person alone. I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> but as I tell you, about time March get here. <laughs> we sitting at the movie theater. Popcorning it out. Big thing of popcorn. <laughs> With your little drinks and your red vines, everything just looking nice. But you said in December I'm done. The reason why your New Year's resolutions don't work because you don't have a solution. All right. Why are we making New Year's resolutions and you don't even have a solution? All right. That's the problem. But let's try this for size for 2024. Instead of making New Year's resolutions, let's get a New Year revelation. That might work a little bit better because I know we didn't did it already. Some of us haven't started the resolution from 2019 yet. We treat our life just like a gift that we get on Christmas. They give you that gift, you open up, you're excited, then you can put it down by the time February get here. We do the same thing over and over. That's called repetitive living. All right. The same mindset you had in 2023, you go roll it right in to 2024. All right. Why do we do this? We have too many repeated offenders. <laughs> Isn't that something? Chapter 11 explain the victories of some of the Old Testament's greatest heroes. Amen. Amen. Now. That's the Faith Hall of Fame. Just like we have a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. We have the NBA Hall of Fame. Freak. Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. But we have a Faith Hall of Fame. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the yeah. Word of God. How about that? Anytime you get caught up in something, please turn to chapter 11. Hallelujah. The book of Hebrews, you will see there are some of the greatest Amen. 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 It also explained their suffering and their persecution. Hallelujah. But this chapter 12 uses those examples as a cloud of witnesses. Hallelujah. All right. See, we have this thing in today's society with technology called a cloud. Oh. We want to download stuff up to the cloud. Isn't that something? <laughs> I want to put all my photos, my music in a cloud. Well, let me tell you something. We have a cloud of witnesses that we need to download into our spirit. Amen. To understand how they made it in God. Understand to prove that God does not abandon us when we suffer. Hallelujah. See, God uses your sufferings to fix some little things going on. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus was a green chief. We're a dry tree. Yes, Lord. And some of us as Christians feel as though we are exempt from problems. No, some of us think we shouldn't even get sick. No, I'm the ultimate avenger. I'm good. Nobody can't do anything to me. No, uh -uh. Excuse me? The one who came here suffered, bled, and died yeah, suffered amen, more than you. You think you're going to get through it easy? Uh-uh, because if he's in you, greater is he that is in me than he's in the world. Yeah. 
The good thing is when you can have him working on the inside, working everything out for you, it really makes your life be much more easier than you think. You see, in many cases, he uses those experiences to train us. Amen. As if we were athletes. To make us stronger. In other cases, the same kind of discipline that a child receives from a loving father. Oh, yeah. right. And that's why some of our children are spoiled brats. Yeah. All right. Now. Because they haven't been trained. All right. Now. Y'all know little Timothy when you see him at Walmart acting up, doing a break dance on the aisle floor. Y'all didn't see him. I'm surprised he didn't do his up rock first before he acted up. Spinning on the floor, and then she can't do nothing. Uh-huh. All we have to do is just get our little cart and go around little Timmy and keep it moving. <laughs> but this is a problem at home, but we have a lot of God's children like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We have no endurance. We're weak, simple minded. When yeah. simple problems come up in your life, you start having a fit and falling out in your circumstances. Yeah, all right. Don't get mad at little Johnny. We have some little Jonas too. We got them. You know who they are? Unlike the old covenant, which which rightly inspired the fire, the way to fear and, and love God, that the new covenant offers us peace. Hallelujah. We got a new covenant here. Amen. As with any other matter of truth or falsehood, we should cling to what's what's true and right. Amen. So that we can be a part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken or collapsed. See, a lot of us collapse when we're whining. A lot of us collapse when we're depressed. We collapse and we should be shining at all costs. Amen. Let me mess with this for a minute. Understanding the whining syndrome. All right. Did y'all know there's a whining syndrome? Mm -hmm. Oh, let's have a little fun. You see, I need to, uh, let me work with some of this stuff up here. Because I remember it always says a picture is worth a thousand words. Because a lot of times we don't understand why are you whining for? What are you whining for? A lot of times when you're going through some stuff, what are you whining for? The problem is if you clean up your life. Hallelujah. And you will not need a Kleenex. Uh, all right. Okay. Now. We whine and cry so much, not realizing instead of using the Kleenex to wipe your eyes, you need to wipe your life up. All right. Now. Amen. So you can stop all this whining. Wait. Yeah. Just give some people a Kleenex. Praise See, but you know who the Kleenex wiper is? The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now. He's the one can go in and clean and do a thorough cleaning that yes. you cannot Amen. even ex- under- imagine or experience. Amen. Now. Next one. Oh my goodness. You see, let's see what we got going on here. Oh, look at here. Some <laughs> want to shine while wine. We put a little twist on this because when you're normally whining, God wants us to shine, but some of us want to shine while we whining. All right. We want people to see us complaining. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We want people to see us down uh-huh. in the press. We want people to see us all in the down in the rut. We want people to see us in our pit. Uh-huh. We really want to put, turn up the wine more when people are watching. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Isn't that something? You see, when he already, see, he was already bad, but then when he saw them looking, they turned it up a little bit more. And we got a lot of Christians like that. All right. We want to have that sorrow, pitiful look, not realizing you caused that yourself. All right, now. Those are called self-inflicted wounds. Poor little thing. Just a little whining. Some of us are just like that. Watch me. We do the same thing. Oh my goodness, poor thing. And that's the problem. We love to keep on whining. But understanding the whining syndrome, the nature of whining is what? Whining is a common human response to difficulties. It often stems from a focus on problems Rather than solutions. Yeah. Oh, that's, good. that's where your whining comes from because you're not looking at 
the winning factor. Jesus already won the battle that you already did him with. Amen. Because I rest and assure you, you made it to the last month of 2023. Hallelujah. Thank you. You know a whole bunch of situations you've been through this year. Hallelujah. You probably can remember the very first circumstance you had in the beginning of the year. Then he brought you out of that one, then another situation. Amen. Came. Now, amen. He brought you out of that one, then another one came. Hallelujah. He's good because you're here today. Hallelujah. Listen, whining can hinder personal growth. Yes, yes, whining yes. can affect relationships yes, and sir. spiritual progress. All right. Mm. Whining doesn't change nothing. Amen. Winning Amen. does. Yeah. We need to have a winning mentality instead of a whining mentality. Right. Oh, yeah. What are the consequences of whining? Oh, it creates a negative atmosphere. All right. Y'all know the co-workers that come in whining? Mm -hmm. Ain't been clocked in yet. <laughs> Go make the whole workplace a mess. Uh, because this is something you brought to work. Yeah. The task is not taking work home. Right. But you bring it home to work. All right. Isn't that something? Y'all know anybody yeah. like that? Yeah. But some of us carry our problems with us. Yeah. All right. All not realizing Jesus has a better way and solution to solve what you're going yes. through. Amen. What else he does? It hinders Amen. gratitude and contentment. You're not content because you're wrestling with some things. All right. And a lot of us keep getting body slammed and pinned to the mat by our own problems. All right. Now. Whining can rob us of joy and peace. Amen. Now. Jesus said, I'll give you a peace that passes all, all understanding. understanding. Yes, Amen. Now. But a lot of us don't understand that kind of peace. Because we don't have that peace that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. Embracing the shining mindset. That's something we got to grow to have. Yes. How do you get the shining mindset? Right. Cultivating our gratitude. Mm -hmm. Gratitude shifts our focus from what we lack to what we have. Right. Yeah. When you look around mm -hmm. in your life, you probably got more than what you need. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I'm not going to ask you to go take a peek in that closet. <laughs> we got all these bags in here. Yeah. <laughs> we got all these shoes in here. We got all these suits in here. We got all these hats in here. When I went about the clothes, we can't fit. Uh -uh. Are we going to bless somebody? Yeah. Uh -uh. Or are we going to burden the clothing? What's that song? If it don't fit, don't force it, just re You can't let that go. What are you talking about? Relax and let it go. You let it go, that's why you can't relax. And that's why it don't fit. And we force so much. But we need to stop hoarding. Ooh, all right. All right. That suit is a waist 34. <laughs> My brother, that's a waist 34. But we looking like Studio 54. <laughs> <laughs> Are we planning on getting back to the 34? But if somebody can be appreciative of their 34, let it go. Make room. Now, shoes, on the contrary, you can't lose weight in your feet. All right. But I know them heels look so good. But our feet grow. That's what I thought. Bless somebody. We hold it on to stuff and we have to let it go. It's the same thing with our Christian walk. There's some old stuff in us that we need to let go. So we can make room for the new us. Amen. 
that will enable us not to be whining because you still got room to whine. Let's get rid of that so we can have room to shine. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, a thankful heart Amen. opens the door to the blessings of joy. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Philippians 4 and 6 encourages us to present our requests with thanksgiving. Yeah. We need to let God know what we want. Yeah. But we're so quick to let everybody else know what we yeah. need and want. All right. But we don't run to our Father. Preach. Hallelujah. Now. It amazes me how we made it this far and we still can't thank God. God blesses you every day, wakes you up to do everything else except worship Him. Oh, facing challenges with faith. You don't have to challenge nothing if you got faith. Hallelujah. Challenges are opportunities for growth. Hallelujah. That's why we have a lot of Christians in our churches that have been sitting for 30 or 40 years and nobody grown yet. Uh-uh. Some churches are modern day daycares. No, no. They look just like daycares. We have a lot of people still on milk. Hallelujah. That's true. Milk level understanding of the word of God. Amen. It looks weird enough as an adult holding a mouth. All right now. How do you think God feels when he know he didn't brought you and you should have been grown now? Amen now. And that's why I mess around with some of y'all sometime and play with you because what if God forbid our Christianity was displayed over our head like how many bars you got on your phone for a good service <laughs> signal. You got five bars? That means you got a good signal with God, right? All right. What if you got the look <laughs> no. but you only got one bar, though? Wow. Uh -oh. Ooh. That's right. Oh, my God. <laughs> you got the look. You got your Bible in hand. But then it says no service. If <laughs> 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 then you gotta ask somebody, can I borrow your phone? Oh, wow. <laughs> to get a connect to God. Oh, but no. our Christianity, we glad it's not displayed. Right. Because uh -huh. some will probably try to borrow somebody else's somebody else's coverage on. Uh, all right now. Oh. You gotta make sure you cover. Preach. Hallelujah. Yeah. You got, how many bars you got today? You got five or four? Or what what oh you working God. with? Uh-uh. <laughs> now watch this. You say you got five, but you whining. Uh-uh. But you know what your five is? And if you're whining, that's the volume of your cry you got. Uh -oh. <laughs> your volume shows a five in your whining. All right. But you're not shunning. Uh -huh. James one. Verses 2 and 4 reminds us to consider trials as joy. Right. Amen. You should be thankful when Amen. something comes your way because he brought you this far. I mean, I don't know what everybody age is. Some people have been walking with the Lord much longer than me. Hallelujah. Yes. But that's the thing. When joy comes, when you find yourself in a direst temptation. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Knowing that God is in you working this thing out. Hallelujah. Trusting God's plan allows us to face adversity with confidence. Hallelujah. You have been there and done that. I have been through this. Yes, you Amen. welcome your situations like, come on, Cletus, I got this. Oh, yeah. Bring it on. Bring it on. Greater is he that is in me. Amen. Then he is in the world. Amen. Choosing positivity. We got so many negative people around us. Wow. All right, now. Anybody know negative Nancy? Man. Negative Nathaniel? They think negative. It's always something wrong. All right now. Football game in is starting negative. <laughs> Some people ain't even ordered their food yet. Men you come, they already negative. When people act up, when you order, go to another table. You know why? Because you'll find yourself, you will irritate. The waitress, and they might tell the cook, special hookup. Uh, <laughs> yeah. they got that. 
Uh -oh. On the internet one time, I saw this young lady got the hamburger bun. Oh, wow. And then wiped us Okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, no. Yes. You heard it. They wiped themselves and <laughs> finished that burger. What are we doing, people? See, it's bad enough when you're a Christian and you're acting a fool in the restaurant. Say, you got to be careful who you treat because you placing your meal in their hands. Yeah. Especially you ain't paid for it yet. And you wondering why your burger you thought that was chili. <laughs> we got to choose positivity. Positive attitudes are contagious and uplifting. All right, now. Yes, you are. Proverbs 17, 22 states, a cheerful heart is like good medicine. Right. 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 Amen. A cheerful heart is like good medicine. Amen, now, man. A cheerful heart is like good medicine. Hallelujah. Our words and thoughts have the power to shape our reality. Amen, now. The Bible says, so a man thinking, so he is. Amen, now. If you think this way all the time, that's what you are. All right, now. Shining like stars. Mm -hmm. Did Earth, Wind, and Fire make a song? Shining stars. Shining star. Y'all know the group was very spiritual, right? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You know they named themselves after the four elements. Yeah. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Right. Water. But I'm just saying, it's kind of interesting. They were very spiritual. They was on the sun. Praise the Lord. All right. Now. Shining star. We need to be like shining star. Amen now. For you to see. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Being a light in darkness. Now. Mm -hmm. The problem, a lot of us have a light, but we turn it out and go in a dark place. All right, now. You're supposed to turn your light on and go where the dark is. All right, now. Amen. Matthew 5, 14 and 16 calls us to light the world up. We are the salt of the earth. Amen, Salt is supposed to enhance Amen. meat. Right. Mm -hmm. Salt is to enhance with flavor. Right. All right. Do we have anybody in here? The food come. You ain't even tasted yet, but she say, "Can I have some salt?" <laughs> <laughs> we got any of those in here? You know, oh, they put they put it there. I thought they took care of it back there, but we just want to make sure. We want to add salt. See, but we got to make sure we're like that wherever we go, though. Hallelujah! Now. Whoever you're around, I'm quite yeah. sure they bland. Yeah. <laughs> they down. All right now. They plain. Yeah. Well, we need to add some flavor to their life. Hallelujah. Thank but you. But it's interesting how we can let somebody who don't have salt huh. enhance us in a whole nother way. Oh, yeah. uh, all right. Isn't that something? Yes, 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 yes. You, let me mess with you for a minute. Y'all know flour, sugar, and salt all look the same. All right, now. Why are we putting flour in our coffee? You got to be careful just because it looked like it. That ain't what it is. All right, now. And a lot of us have an assortment of seasonings in our life. All right, now. You paprika today? Cayenne. <laughs> you act a little cayenne-ish today? Uh -uh. But God wants us to be salt. Hallelujah. To enhance flavor. Remember what I say? You just add a pinch. Amen. And it'll make the difference. All right. Amen. Now. See, just a little bit of you. Hallelujah. Can make a big difference and impact a situation. Amen. Now. Just a little bit. That's all you need. 
Our attitude in challenging times sets us apart. Right. Shining brings joy and glory to God and draws others to him. See, that light that's shining in you, yes. that's not even you. Hallelujah. That's him working through you to do of his will and to do of his good pleasure. Hallelujah. That's how this thing works. Inspiring others yes. through resilience. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Our response to difficulties can inspire others. Yes, Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9 encourages us not to be crushed or miserable. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. See, when we feel miserable, we need to look for mercy. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Resilience in Christ demonstrates his strength. In our weakness. Yes, when Lord. we are weak, that's when he's definitely strong in me. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes I just like to be weak. That way I can depend on him. Amen. Right? Now. See, a lot of times we approach everything like I got this. Ooh. But there's a spirit of humility and humbleness has to lower yourself so he can increase. Amen. See, that's the key. That's so true. John the Baptist was here. Jesus was here. When John the Baptist had to decrease, and Jesus had to increase. Hallelujah. See, a lot of you Amen. have yourself up here. All right. God has to shift and bring you down right. so Amen. he can increase. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And a lot of you are whining because you're here. Because the moment when Christ comes into you, he's going to lower you so you can win. Hallelujah. But this morning, let us commit ourselves to stop whining mm -hmm. and start shining. Amen. Amen. In doing so, we not only transform our lives, Hallelujah. but we also become beacons of hope and inspiration to those around us. Amen. 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 See, he just didn't save you for you. Amen. He saved you to save someone else. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. May we embrace the victorious mindset that often comes from trusting in God's promises and facing challenges with gratitude, faith, and positivity. Yes, sir. As we shine in this world, many others may see the light of Christ in us and be drawn to his love and grace. Amen. Amen. That's what this is about, drawing somebody. Amen now. Today's message was entitled, Stop Whining and Start Shining. Hallelujah. Well, we will remember when Jesus was tried by the Pharisees. Hallelujah. And the two kings, Herod and Pilate. And he didn't say a mumbling word at all. Hallelujah. Isn't it interesting how Jesus didn't whine? He received it as full penalty. Hallelujah. Thank you know what that means by Jesus Christ not whining at all? That means we shouldn't be complaining. Amen. 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 At his moment as he faced death, he did not whine or oh, yes, complain. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't do it. Jesus didn't whine at all, but he won. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus didn't whine at all, but he is the King of Kings yes. Amen. Yes. and the Lord of Lords. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Jesus didn't whine at all, but he welcomes all sinners yes. Yes. in the world to believe on him whom he has sent. Amen. Jesus didn't whine at all, but we all won when he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. On the third day for our justification. You see, Jesus did not whine at all when they beat him all night long. Yes, Lord. Jesus didn't whine at all when he said, Father, forgive them. Hallelujah. For they know not what they do. Yes, Lord. Jesus did not whine at all when they led him down through the 14 stations of the Via Della Rosa. Yes, Lord. Jesus didn't whine at all as they led him to Golgotha's hill. Yes, Lord. 
Jesus did not whine when they placed a nail into his left wrist. Yes, yes sir. Jesus did not whine when they placed a nail into his right oh, wrist. Yeah. Yes, Jesus did not whine at all when they placed a nail in his feet. Yes, but Jesus did not whine when he said, it is finished. Oh, yeah. Amen. Jesus did not whine at all when he said, Father, into thine hand, Yes, Lord. I commend my spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus did not whine when he hung his head yes, between Thank the locks you. of his shoulders. Jesus did not whine when they placed him in a borrowed tomb. Jesus did not whine when he stayed there all day Friday. Yes, Jesus did not whine when he stayed there all day Saturday. Jesus did not whine when he stayed there all day Saturday night. Yes, yes. Jesus did not whine. But something happened early Sunday morning. When he got up with all power in heaven and in earth. As Jesus did not whine, Jesus did shine on the third day when he rose with all power in heaven and earth. And he still lives and he's coming back for a church without spot or room. Are you excited today that he lives? Hopefully you don't mind the last few days of this month. But God is hoping and praying that we can shine in 2024. But you can start shining right now. You don't have to wait at all. Just because you think your tires is shining, you can shine way much brighter than the morning star. That's who he is. Jesus is the brighter morning star. Amen. Amen. You know, this morning, we're going to give God some praise. We made it. Man, it amazes me so much how I keep forgetting to do certain things. And um, let me do this very briefly. Who could tell me what the number 12 means? Just raise your hand if you know it. Government. Governmental fullness. I'm trying to get rid of some of this stuff. <laughs> So much stuff I've been trying. I meant to get this stuff out while I was uh, in the midst of the message. But... <laughs> oh my goodness, I tell you, to God be the glory. Wow. Well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure I get the rest of these out next Sunday. Is that sound like a plan? Because I'm a stickler. I make sure that in God's house, I always give out things. Because the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. And I forgot, see, there's another thing, too. When a person is sleeping in here, all you got to do is just raise your hand. You ain't got to interrupt them. Let them keep sleeping. Just point where they are. And you're going to get a gift card for blessing. That's called sleep watching. Because it's amazing to me how... We slept last night. All right. But we come to God's house to take a nap. We got that thing real twisted. Man. Oh, you preaching, doctor, now. We don't know what was going on last night, huh? But to God be the Lord, it's good to see all of you. But let us do this. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Then, Father God, we thank you so much for your thank word you, today. Father, we thank, thank you, you because you're so worthy to be praised, glorified, and lifted up. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and what yes, our ears have heard this morning. Father, there's someone who has been whining, and they want to shine and start yes. shining, but they must find Jesus Christ oh, to yes. shine. Yes. 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 Do not know Jesus Christ as your personal yes. Savior. All you do is just raise your hand if you yes. don't know yes. Christ. You're tired of yes. whining. Yes. You're tired of complaining. Yes. You want all that to be pushed Amen. behind and leave it on this side Thank of 2023 and welcome to 2024 with the new Thank year you, revelation instead of a resolution. Yes, sir. Is there anyone 
who would like to make one of your symbols in your church home. All you do is just yes, make sure. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. If there's anyone who has not been baptized and would like to be baptized, all you do is just raise your hand. Hallelujah. Amen. And we have done as the Lord has commanded us to do. And at this moment, Father, if we will get in a place where we can start preparing for communion. Yes, Lord. So we can discern your body. And Father God, we thank you so much. Yes, Lord. Yes. For your people. Lord. At this moment, we ask that you will forgive us for all of our sins yes. and all of our transgressions. Oh, yeah. Father, we will anything that's not right within our hearts, spirit, and minds, and our souls. Father, forgive us if we look at someone thank you, Jesus. or yeah, said something. My God. Yes, thought Lord. something inappropriate or something. Father, yes, forgive us for all of our sins of omission yes, and all of our yes, sins of commission. Yes, Lord. Father, if you said, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering, so I come again. Yes. And Father, we're praying for the communion. Yes, Lord. That the bread represents your body, your demonstrates, represents your life, your sufferings, and your death. And the fruit of the vine, which is a Jew, represents the shedding blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. It represents the New Testament and the New Covenant. Lord, we thank you so much. And we thank ask all you. these blessings in the Master's priceless name, which is Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes.
as we hold this bread, which is symbolic of the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it represents his life, his sufferings, and his death. He said, do this and remember to me, show forth my death and sufferings until they come again. He said, take y'all to me, and they all did eat. Lord, we did this not for the nourishment of these moral bodies, but we did this for the nourishment of the soul. Father, as we hold the fruit of the vine, this is representing of your blood that was shed and given as a ransom for the New Testament and for the New Covenant. He said, drink ye all of it, and they all did drink. Lord, we did this not for the nourishment of these warm bodies, but we did this for the nourishment of the soul. To God be the glory. We thank you so much. Nice message. And nice most of us um, can hear your support through these two different types of apps. A lot of people on social media always say, how can we help give us support? So we have these two apps for the giving. One of them is Givelify. You can find us there as One Way Assembly. And then on Zelle, you can find us there at 510-417-8000 to support in giving as an offering and ministry to the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we thank you all so much Amen. because he didn't have to do it, but he did. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but you did. Yes, so to God be the glory is good seeing family, friends, and those who are with us. We pray for your traveling grace as you came to be with us in person in the sanctuary today. To God be the glory. Love you all so much and continue to pray for one way assembly. Continue to pray for one another. Continue to pray for the peace of the city of Jerusalem. Yes. And we're going to pray for your traveling grace that you'll make it back to your destinations after you left them this morning. And hopefully, Lord's will, see you guys on Thursday. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Love you all so much. Today's message was entitled, Stop Mining and Start Shining. Amen. To God be the glory. Love you all so much. God bless you.